we're going. I'm going to turn to your audience now. Right, hi there everyone. I'm looking at the wrong place. I should be looking there. <laughs> so, uh, hi there everyone. Welcome to Lockdown Live. Uh, we're at Fixendale. We've got a jet aeroplane today that seems to be uh, having a whale of a time up there. So if there's any audio issues, it's uh, the aeroplane up there. But I hope you're all keeping safe and well wherever you are. Uh, we're in lockdown again. I say that with a smile on my face, but it's not its not funny. Uh, but anyway, we're going to do our best to keep you entertained uh, throughout this lockdown period again. We're bringing you some lives. I'm incredibly busy at this time of year, fitting new cameras everywhere, new nest boxes. So we're going to bring you as many uh, uh, videos and lockdowns as we can. So uh, are we all good to go, Will? We've got Check our we people watching. Sam says, I'm waiting for an okay. To... Sam says that it sounds great. And just so, uh, it's Tuesdays and Thursdays, I think, is our yeah. plan. Yeah, yeah, so we're going to do Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, throughout this lockdown period. No matter how long it is, uh, I was just getting ready today and Bandita came uh, for a food, which is a shame to disturb. But it's a beautiful day out here today. As you can see, we've had some snow. I kind of want more snow. I absolutely love it when it snows. Uh, but this is the conditions in winter I love up here. All this wet and windy weather we've been having has been a little bit laborious. Uh, but I've been out this morning uh, down to feed the buzzards down the valley. Uh, I can just hear one call in there, so check out the live cameras. The buzzard will be going in to feed it hopefully soon. And I saw a fox uh, scampering across the horizon there, which was a fabulous thing to see. So uh, today I'm going to take you through a few snowy scenes that we've seen. If anyone's got any questions, pop them in. Uh, Sam's in the office, he feeds them through to us and I'll do my best to, to answer them for you. But uh, it's a really special day out here today uh, and it's good to share it with you. So we're uh, going to start with the videos then. So these are just a few of the snowy videos uh, that we've been seeing over the last few days. We've got this fabulous, quite unusual pheasant and it's just these little moments that we pick up uh, on our live cameras uh, which we which we absolutely love. I mean, he's literally just posing for me. Pheasants are obviously really quite common around here, um, but but I do kind of quite like them. They're uh, curious little characters, and that was just a, a lovely shot of pheasants out there. This, this camera was put there for hares predominantly, and I'd love to capture something in the snow, similar with the brown hares, but in winter they can, they can hunker down a little bit in winter. Uh, but I've seen them out there, boxing and uh, courting, so hopefully one day uh, we'll get a snowy hair popping by. That'll be just fabulous if we can get that. And this is uh, Greet's uh, new uh, new man. Gilfie's. Yeah, Gilfie, sorry, yeah. Oh, <laughs> too many names. Too, too many owls, I'm just getting confused. Too many owls. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is Gilfie's uh, new mate, and this is when it snowed the other day. Uh, and this snow, when it came, it literally came in really quickly. I was awake at half past seven in the morning and uh, I have to admit I had an extra few hours, not hours, minutes, uh, and a few minutes later we had a full whiteout that came down in about half an hour that snow uh, and completely transformed the landscape that we've got here. I can show you that on the feeding post here if you like. Yeah. This was that 15 minute period. Yes, this is the snow coming in. This is just literally 15 minutes of snow uh, coming in quite decent sized flakes. So this literally, I, I love moments like this where our landscape here is literally transformed within a matter of minutes. Just fabulous. There's nothing quite like snow to do that. It really changes our, uh, you know, the way we look at our landscape here. And I love to film in it as well. And here we are, the beautiful Bandita. She's popping up there to have a look and we're quite high off the ground here. Um, my feet are about eight feet off the ground. Um, plus another six feet so uh, yeah she's, she can climb she can do anything swim I actually watch her going through the hedge lines uh, climbing up trees so coming up here is just a piece of cake for her uh, she's a super little super little animal and then what we're going to look at next we'll have a look at our buzzards oh the buzzards yeah I was down feeding the buzzards this morning and this is that snow coming in again so we've just uh, sped this little bit of footage up and this is uh, fabulous to then see the transition that Will's done here. So we've had the snow come in and we transition, transition through for the, to the buzzard actually coming in for a feed. 
And we've got two uh, feeding there at the moment, the male and the female. And uh, yeah, just looking at the image there, it's a stunning image. That and that's just down the valley. Beautiful buzzard. It's great, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so today we're gonna, people have been asking me lots of questions about what I've been up to with this little gadget here. I'll just, I'll just grab it because it's been actually filming here today. And uh, I'll undo this, show you how it's all fixed on and stuff. We've got a big Manfrotto arm coming up, which is flexible uh, down here. Just show you the top of it. And on the top of it, I put, um, these are, I love them, ram mounts, um, I think from the USA. So these are ram mounts and these just clip together all different types of suction literally you can put them, get mounts to fit anything and everything from a fishing rod obviously to cameras uh, and they're fabulous because they're very very simple and quick to use uh, i've used lots of different types of things like this uh, and these are the best ones i've got but this is a little gadget everyone's been interested in so i'll unscrew it from here and this is a dji uh, pocket osmo and this is uh, what it is. I've got the creator's combo, which is uh, great. So I've, it's a little bit longer, this one. You have an extra attachment. And in here we've got, um, in this little section here, here we've got all the Wi-Fi and... Um, Bluetooth and stuff like that. Yeah, it's Bluetooth in here. It's work, working on Wi-Fi with the firm, this one, isn't it? Not Bluetooth, yeah. So this is uh, gives us a lot more options of what we can do with this. So it's literally tiny. And what we've managed to capture with this has just absolutely astounded me. I use quite a lot. I've got things in my pockets all over the place here. I use these quite a lot, GoPros. I use these a lot and uh, whether one day these are going to be replaced with this I'm not sure yet. Uh, this isn't fully weatherproof. People have seen it out here in the snow and the rain. I'm not too precious over my equipment. My equipment gets used and if it fails along the way it fails along the way unfortunately. So I've uh, you know, the equipment is there to be used and uh, I'm not precious over it. Uh, and the odd shower on here, it's coped with quite well. So I uh, just want to show you some of the footage I've managed to capture it. So it's capable of all sorts of things for the size. We've got eight times slow-mo, yeah, but we need, you know, we need more light uh, for that. But this is the male cache come in. This was nearly dark the other night when this came in. So there's still a little bit of uh, blurring on the wings, but this is done at half speed. Slow-mo, which is 50 frames a second, the mail coming in, and uh, we were watching. I was watching this from a hide, uh, just a few meters away down there, and I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. Really, uh, it was virtually dark outside, and this little tiny camera has managed to capture this. And here's the female coming in as well. It's absolutely stunning. The female coming in there as well, and. Uh, I hope you guys can hear the little sounds that these kestrels are making. I think you can hear the lovely sounds because this is the cool thing with this. When you get the creator's combo, you get this microphone as well. And this is wireless microphone. And this can work at a decent distance away from the actual camera as well. Uh, and it's just, um, yeah, I'm absolutely amazed that we're capturing footage like this on something that literally fits in your pocket. It's, uh, yeah. Uh, impressed is an understatement at the moment. So these is DJI, they make drones, they're the biggest drone maker in the world and they also make little gadgets like this and uh, I do have the DJI drone and that is also, uh, have I said it's good the drone Will? <laughs> Once or twice? Once or twice. <laughs> Once or twice, I do love my drone, it's uh, quite incredible. So we can bring you some drone footage and show you that as well. But this is what I've been up to, people have been asking me what you're doing and I think this uh, demonstrates it really well. We've got our static IP cameras which are designed really for security uh, cameras and uh, they have captured some incredible footage uh, and some beautiful stuff but I like to have a little bit more control. Look at this barn owl coming in. So all the time we're trying to bring better and better footage uh, to, you, you, to you guys and uh, having little gizmos like this. Sometimes you buy things and then you're just a little bit disappointed. This isn't the case with this one because uh, you just look at the footage here. So how we film this as well, this is actually filmed under normal security lights um, at the moment and sometimes on this footage you'll see almost like banding uh, running through. Uh, Wilson's it's almost like being 
near a swimming pool. I don't spend that much time near a swimming pool, so I wouldn't know. Maybe a river. <laughs> but it, um, but there's a slight wave running through the image, and that's because uh, the security lights are not actually balanced uh, properly to work with cameras uh, with the frequency. So we are going to get some uh, some proper lighting and test this out as well, and show you the sort of difference. But uh, I mean, I could just watch this all day. It's absolutely stunning. So this is shot at night, obviously. Uh, so this this footage is just shot in one evening, and uh, just one evening. That's all it was. Yeah. As well. yeah, I put this out uh, um, as it was sort of getting a little bit gloomy yesterday, and I thought, am I just wasting my time? And because it's a bit fiddly, I put this uh, uh, power lead to it, so I've got mains power in the shed. Um, so anyone that needs any more techie advice, um, not everyone will be interested, but some people out there will be very interested. I use these batteries, anchor batteries, and these are uh, power banks basically. And this plugs in to either my GoPro or my uh, DJI Pocket. And uh, these can then, you put a large memory card in there. And these can run like... We did 18 hours. Yeah, we've done 18 hours with this one. And we still had space on the car, yeah, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Crazy. So this is the crazy thing about it. We can put this out and just leave it running for 18 hours. Weatherproofing on this, um, yeah, that, that's an issue. They do do a weatherproof housing uh, with the GoPros. These are weather weather sealed, and uh, DJI also makes something very similar to this. Um, so I shall have to try one of those one day as well, a DJI version of that and see how I get on. But this focuses really closely on light. Uh, get very close focusing. So that's the ticket bit out of the way. Is there any sort of uh, questions anyone wants to ask me? So we've had a few questions come through already. So the mm -hmm. first one, we've had quite a few people asking about Drax. So yeah. we could have a brief update on Drax for people who don't know who she is and then an update for people who do. Yeah, got too many things. I can take some if that helps. <laughs> that help up there. Yeah, so Drax is a barn owl that was uh, uh, bought, brought into us uh, from Jean and she had a respiratory problem that we soon sort of realised as we were trying to release her uh, and she's been back and forth to the vets. I can't even describe how much effort they've put into it. Uh, battle flats at Stamford Bridge uh, have been absolutely brilliant. Uh, so she's got this respiratory problem, maybe sinus sinusitis. Uh, she then came back here and she was starting to struggle So she's now back uh, with Jean Thorpe, back and forth to the vet. She's been on uh, three lots of antibiotics now, I think. She's been on anti-inflammatories. Uh, she's had her sinuses flushed. Um, you name it, she's had everything thrown at her. And she's uh, currently doing fine. Uh, she's in, a, in almost like a rehab shed, which is uh, fully enclosed. So she's not facing any of this proper, proper weather that we're getting up here. So we will get her back and we will try her again out in the wild. What we've got to be cautious is she's well enough to come back here. We don't want uh, spreading any diseases to any of the owls that we've got here. Because this is quite unusual, a lot of owls land here and feed here. And that doesn't happen in the true wild, so we've got to be really cautious and aware of that. But we've all got to cross our fingers and hope, uh, hope she's coming back with us soon. But it's not until we get her back that we actually really know how she's going to cope in the wild, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, hopefully she's going to be fine. Uh, we've got somebody asking where does Bomber stay during the day and is that near Luna? Yeah, there's, there's a few hangouts uh, and we've got a wood at the back of the house there and he sits in some of the trees there. Often he, he joins her through the winter months in that nest box, uh, but they seem to be slightly separate, but quite often Knit up near my workshop near the Barn Owl Tower, there's a little wood there uh, and there's quite a lot of cover in there. I planted that in 2006, that wood, and it's uh, fabulous for the owls. And often when we go out to the cars, he gives us a little hoot. <laughs> so, uh, and we see him sat in there. We found him the other day, didn't we? Just yep. by following the bird alarm calls. Just quite happily sat there in an in a evergreen bush, uh, quite low down. Uh, so yeah, so he, he's, he's still with us anyway. We see him every night, don't we, on the, on the live cams. We do. Have any of the birds ever damaged the cameras? Oh, yeah, early on, yeah, yeah. When I first started with the um, live, uh, you know, with the, uh, like, IP cameras, I had little tiny cameras. 
and I put them really excitedly in a Kestrel nest box and they literally just buried it in poo. <laughs> this little camera has had to chip it out of there uh, and that gets into the connections and stuff but I use mainly external cameras now even inside nest boxes so uh, yeah I mean I, I sit on a chat last night I've had uh, uh, grizzly bears pinch these off me before and it's not easy getting one of these back from a grizzly bear you've got to you've got to actually uh, <laughs> Uh, let it decide it wants to drop it. Um, so I've had a, one of those chewed by a grizzly bear and it survived, that was the GoPro. Um, yeah, a lot of good dental work, but I don't think I really have. Uh, no, not, not badly damaged, no, anyway, not yet. <laughs> um, somebody has asked, do you have just bird boxes or bat ones too? Yeah, that's a good good question. So we have, we have bats uh, here living under the slates uh, and in different areas where there's little spaces to get under the roof and it's something that I'm, I'm interested in. I'm interested in trying to get cameras in there but they're, uh, they're not the easiest thing to, to film. I've never really seen any decent bat footage inside bat boxes. They like very small little spaces, especially the bats that we have here. We mainly have pipistrel bats and they are absolutely tiny uh, and they like really small tight spaces and they like um, you know different temperatures uh, as well at different times of year so if you get one bat box um, they like to be warmed up by the sun at some times and to be cool at others so uh, yeah they're a curious thing and it's one of the things that's on the list but as you can see with all the wildlife that we're doing we're literally inundated with the work that we're working on uh, if i'm going to the effort i'd rather do buzzards rather than bats that's the problem i have <laughs> so we've got one final question which comes from jules who's one of our facebook supporters uh, she asks, how many barn owls are in your local area? Oh gosh, I, I can tell you how many were here when I first moved here. There were zero. So uh, when I first moved here, we didn't have any uh, any barn owls uh, in this area. And one nested right over in the horizon there. And that was the sort of start of a big project that I did, putting up 150 barn owl boxes, uh, working with the landowners in this area and farmers. Uh, and since then, and since the supplementary feeding, uh, quite often through the winters I was supplementary feeding uh, three pairs of barn owls each year and that got them through the really hard spells uh, and we have had some incredibly hard winters uh, over the last sort of 10, uh, 11 years. 2010 was brutal, so we had six weeks here where it didn't get above freezing and we had nearly 18 inches to two foot of standing snow here with a hard crust on it. So those barn owls couldn't hunt and we lost a lot of those barn owls. Uh, so some people criticise me for supplementary feeding uh, birds of prey and owls, or they can criticise uh, as much as they like. I know it works and we've got many barn owls here. We're trying to add up how many barn owls we have visiting here. Uh, I guess I would say we've got at least a dozen coming into the garden uh, here to feed, but it is very difficult pinpointing exactly who's who. There is a video if you're interested. <laughs> yeah, we do have a video with uh, eight of them. It is eight, isn't it, that we've, yeah, we've, we've so pinned far. down. Yeah, and there is probably at least another four uh, or so in the garden. Uh, but there's different areas around here where we have them, and I know all the sort of nest sites. Uh, and it's good when we have good years to see them doing well. This year hasn't been a good year um, around here, so uh, we'll just have to hope for another good breeding season next year. So I think that's all for today. When are we back on, Rob? We're back on Thursday. And, uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. I don't, what day is it today? It Thursday. is Thursday. I know. So I'm, we're back on Tuesday. Tell I'm professional at this, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> you can tell it's the first one as well. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll be back on Tuesday and we'll bring you uh, something else. If anyone's got any suggestions on what uh, you want to uh, have me talking about, if you want any more tech stuff, let me know. And we'll